unbeknownst to most people, outside of all these different talking points, well, right now, there is a real serious initiative being pushed forward to help dismantle the administrative state. This initiative is known as Project 2025. And if it actually comes to fruition, it'll have massive consequences on the type of country that our kids will actually inherit. Although to explain why that is, I need to back up for a quick moment and set the stage for you properly. Right now, with the presidential election starting to really kick into high gear, we're beginning to see the front runners of the Republican Party coalesce around a certain type of promise. That's because whether it's President Trump, Governor DeSantis, or Vivek Ramaswamy, the current three front runners, they have all, in some way, shape, or form, promised to gut the deep state, otherwise known as the administrative state. And as a campaign promise, that's all well and good. Many people across the country support it. However, Let's just assume for a super quick moment that a Republican candidate does go on to win the general election and becomes the 47th president of the country. Then what? Simply winning the White House does not necessarily mean that there will be broad changes to administrative policies, especially when you have an entrenched bureaucracy numbering in the hundreds of thousands that has formed over the last 100 plus years. And this administrative state, it has a clear liberal slant. In fact, according to data from the Federal Elections Commission, quote, a stunning 95% of political donations from federal employees went to Democratic liberal candidates. 95%. And so, with the massive growth of the federal government over the past 100 plus years, this has resulted in what some people refer to as the fourth branch of government, the bureaucratic branch, which is now dominated by liberal ideology. And this branch is large. Here's, in fact, how it's described over in the pages of the National Affairs magazine. Quote, It is fitting that we refer to the administrative state as a state, for it has become a sovereign power unto itself, an imperium, an imperio, regulating virtually every dimension of our lives. Its nearly 450 agencies are manned by legions of bureaucrats, now numbering almost 2.7 million. And so, millions of liberal bureaucrats entrenched within the federal government irrespective of who actually resides in the White House. And it's exactly this scenario, which has led to the birth of something called the Project 2025 Initiative. This is a very, very large scale project that was launched by the Heritage Foundation, which for your reference is a conservative policy think tank. And Project 2025, otherwise known as the Presidential Transition Project, it aims to gut the federal government of its current progressive bureaucrats and replace them with conservative bureaucrats. And this initiative, which, just for your reference, is already well into full swing, it aims to do most of the heavy lifting prior to the actual election, such that if a Republican were to, in fact, get elected into the White House, they would have a database of conservative personnel to essentially deconstruct the administrative state starting on day one, as well as have in place a training program in order to recruit ever more people. And so, in order to get a better idea of how Project 2025 will work in practice, we took the opportunity to speak with Mr. Spencer Cradian, who is the associate director of the project over at the Heritage Foundation. And he broke down for us exactly what they're doing to dismantle the administrative state, as well as what people across America can do if they wish to get involved. And take a listen. Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, maybe to start with, for the audience members who aren't aware of what it is, can you give a sort of a high level overview of what Project 2025 is? Sure. So Project 2025, or the 2025 Presidential Transition Project, that's the full name, it really is the conservative movement's effort to get ready for the next conservative president. It feels like in Washington, D.C., we're always playing an away game. We are always at a deficit to com compared to how the left uh, is so good at going into government. So what this project is, it's four pillars. Uh, the first pillar is our policy book called Mandate for Leadership. This outlines what a conservative success looks like at each federal agency. We have a second pillar, which is our presidential personnel database. We're doing the work ahead of time and recruiting people ahead of time to come to Washington and work for the next conservative president. The third pillar is our Presidential Administration Academy. That is training people up ahead of time so that we are ready to hit the ground running when we come to Washington with the next conservative president in 2025. And then the fourth pillar is what we call the playbook. And that's a transition plan for each federal agency so that we'll be uh, ready to hit the ground running. And all of these are available at project2025.org. That's how folks can get involved. 
I should mention that Project 2025 is organized by the Heritage Foundation, but it includes more than 70 partner organizations on our advisory board, all of whom are working together to get ready for the next president. Mm -hmm. Spencer, let me ask you this. Out of the uh, current Republican nominees, and let's say out of the, let's say, three or four front runners, have any of them signaled support for this project? Yes, we are working uh, with various presidential candidates and their staff, and I think what has been heartening to us at Project 2025 is to see so many of the candidates talking about the importance of deconstructing the administrative state and defeating the permanent bureaucracy that exists in Washington, D.C. You see the various candidates talking about that. We've made it the number one issue in this race. Uh, and it's not just Republicans either. You know, we'll work with anybody uh, who, who is, any candidate who wants to deconstruct the administrative state is welcome uh, at Project 2025. I think a lot of the people watching this interview are probably of the mindset that getting rid of the bureaucrats who exist from administration to administration to administration and are really running things and can really hamper an administration if they so choose to is a good thing. But on the flip side, I imagine that it would be difficult to do away with, let's say, tens of thousands, 50,000 uh, positions. Um, let's say in the Department of Energy, for instance, if you're going to have a huge amount of turnover, I imagine a lot of institutional knowledge will just go away and maybe you'll have a transition process where the lights maybe have a, pro have a hard time staying on. Um, how, how would you respond to that sort of criticism where some of the institutional knowledge might be lost in this transition process? It's a good question. So what people need to remember is that you have 2.2 million full-time non-military federal employees. You have between 16 million and 20 million federal contractors. And traditionally, only between three and 4,000 people work for the president. Those are the political appointees who can be hired and fired by the president. And we need more political appointees. We need more who come from outside Washington, D.C. With respect uh, to the number that you mentioned, you know, what the vision is of Project 2025, and you see various presidential candidates talking about this as well, is that for those federal employees who hold policy-making positions, those positions should be reportable to the president. We're not necessarily uh, planning to get rid of one person. Uh, what this is, is, a, is to reassert political control of the bureaucracy. And the president is entitled to a supportive staff. Uh, the president is the commander in chief. He's the chief executive officer. And the executive branch should be working to implement the president's vision. So that's what this is about. Um, and folks should know that, w that the conservative movement is ready and determined uh, to bring about political control of the bureaucracy, in addition to reforming the civil service, making sure that um, you know the, the federal workforce operates uh, more like the private sector, where you can dismiss poor performers rather than giving them, uh, you know, basically lifetime tenure that they have now.